Hello, welcome to Northwest Air Guns. I'm John and out here in the shop today I came out and we've got a bit of a chill in here so I'm trying to stay warm until we uh, until we get heated up and today we're gonna get back to our streak from hell. I've been working on it little by little and uh, there have been a few times when I wanted to send it back to hell uh, or at least drive it out on the bridge and throw it into the river but I haven't done that and uh, it's actually coming along pretty well and I know what you're thinking is, is this guy ever going to get into this and, and put some parts into it and see if it works? And, and we will, um, but it doesn't make much sense to do that uh, to a gun that's not repairable. So we've got to go through this, with this particular case anyway, we've got to go through the process of making sure that it's something that can be saved. Kit we're using was provided by Mac One Air Gun Shop, and I had emailed them and, and said, gee, why don't you help me out here and send me a kit and so they did um, and we're featuring that kit uh, in this repair and I want to thank Mac One Air Gun Shop for their support there and I do buy um, individual parts in general from Mac One Air Gun Shop for uh, repair of um, well, any number of guns. If you haven't gone to their website they have a complete line of rebuilt kits for a number of different guns not just the Sheridan Benjamin but also Crossman and some others as well. And of course have new guns. So check it out uh, if you haven't been there. Uh, so with that, um, let's uh, get back to the gun. So I've got the uh, streak from hell here. It's all uh, cleaned up as best I could, at least so far. And what we have here, this is the, uh, we're looking right down the uh, front end of the tube here toward the base and I wanted to show you something here on this so I'm going to zoom it in and uh, we'll look at where the um, pump cup uh, meets up with the compression chamber down here well I couldn't really get into the uh, tube with with the uh, camera the video camera I couldn't get it to focus at the end of the tube uh, but we do have a still picture and this is about as good as we're going to get. You can see um, that little thing in the bottom is kind of a light source so don't worry about that. But if you look around 11 o'clock there looks like there's something going on there. I don't know what. And also the um, center I was able to clean pretty well but around the outside I wasn't. So I, I'm a little bit concerned about what that means but we'll um, take another look at that later um, and try and clean it up even more. This is just a cleaning that we've done here. We haven't done any polishing yet and when we get to that part of it that's when we'll really find out what we've got uh, going on there. Let's take a look at the other end. Alright well this is the uh, other end, the uh, valve end and just taking a quick look at that. Let's see if we can zoom in a little. Now that's it as far as the uh, zooming in but you can see I think around the uh, the center hole there is of course the air intake and then the valve seat for the check valve uh, around that and if you can see it's pretty well chewed up maybe we can put another light in there and that might help um, so that valve seat is pretty well chewed up uh, and it makes me suspect that somebody tried to pound the valve out of here. You know, they may have heard from somebody else that the valve was, uh, it had to be driven out the front or back of the tube or something. And so that's what they were trying to do. And they chewed that up. I, don't, I have no idea otherwise how that seat would get so chewed up. Well, this is um, what it looks like now. I've gone in and uh, took a took a cutter to the bottom, a piloted cutter, and we cut around the uh, where the uh, check valve goes. And actually, all where any seat on this was gouged up. And um, so we had to use make some cutters, actually, to cut the other parts and clean them up and then go over them with uh, sandpaper. But it looks pretty good now. Um, this is kind of in the way, but you can see it's become flat and there's no gouges anymore so hopefully that'll work for the uh, 
for the uh, check valve and the other seals. So, the, so this is a kit I got from uh, Macklin Air Gun Shop for the Sheridan. And what I did is I emailed and said, hey, I've got a streak from hell and I'd like to use one of your kits uh, in it. And so he sent me one. Uh, so just by way of um, disclosure, I didn't actually pay for this kit. And I'm very, you know, I liked Macklin kits and parts before, but now I really like them. Uh, so he's very good about that. What you get with the kit is what you see here. Uh, you get a set of instructions on how to install it and things to look for. You get a bottle of the secret sauce, and this is enough secret sauce to last an awful long time, even if you do a lot of maintenance on your guns. So, so that's a good thing too. And then these are the parts. We're going to go through these and take a quick look at them. Okay. Um, well, we'll just kind of go through the list here. First thing you get is, is an exhaust valve, and this is a factory exhaust valve that, uh, nothing fancy about it, this is not a steroid exhaust valve. Unless you request a steroid kit, you're not going to get that, and you'll get the exhaust uh, valve from the basically factory made. Um, you get a check valve or an intake valve here, and we'll talk about that more in just a minute. We're going to set it aside for now. Um, let's see, you get a round or a keyed rivet. In this case, he sent me both, and we'll talk about those more in just a minute, too. Um, you get uh, spring pins for the front of the tube. You get a um, pump cup, of course, and this will fit either an adjustable pump rod, you know, if you get an adjustable pump cup receiver or retainer, then this will fit that, or it'll fit the old um, old style that takes this type of a pump cup. So that should cover it. You get this, uh, this felt uh, forearm bumper so that when you're pumping it doesn't go clack, clack, clack. It'll kind of cut the noise a little bit as you close the pump arm. Um, a bolt O-ring. A little, little bitty feller there. And this is this is tough stuff. A very hard material. It'll last forever. It might be a little difficult getting it on at first, but it's uh, you'll never have to replace it, probably. Um, these two gaskets, valve gaskets, and these are synthetic. Uh, if you were getting a factory kit, you might have one synthetic and one lead seal. Or if it's a Benjamin, you might get two lead seals. But in this case, this is what you get. And I've had good luck with these kind of seals. They seem to work pretty well. And then a pin for the uh, pumping lever. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about a couple of these things that we set aside for a minute. First, Looking at the uh, at the exhaust or the inlet valve, and this is the one that goes up as, as you're pumping. Uh, it goes up here and seats against that seat right there. Uh, my fingers are in the way, but it sits there as you pump. It moves back off and lets the air in as you stop pumping. It sits back down on the seat there and keeps the air from flowing back out. And this is this is another hard material here, and some of the old ones. Uh, take a look and see what we got here. Um, here's an old one. I'm going to show you a couple old ones here, but what happens is you pump, um, they get a little bit deformed, and you can see there's a ring around this one here where it's set on the seat. And this is a, an older style, but it's the same kind of thing where you get a ring there where it sits on the seat. And what that does, it makes it seal easier uh, because it'll deform to whatever shape the uh, the seat of the valid, valve is. But it also makes it harder to push it off the valve when you start pumping. And, uh, oh, here's, here's the one from the, of course I saved this. This is from our streak from hell. And this is just an O-ring somebody stuck on uh, this piece of brass here. The thing about 
these uh, synthetic seals that you get in this kit is that this really doesn't deform very much so it'll be uh, more efficient in terms of pumping it moving it off of the seat um, but it's also less forgiving of any imperfections in the seat so you really have to make sure when you get uh, into this area that there's no nicks or gouges on that seat and that it's uh, flat and perpendicular to the uh, to the tube. It's with respect to the rivets um, there's two kind of rivets that you're going to see most often. One looks like this and it's got kind of a rectangular piece here with a couple of teeth or ridges or whatever you want to call it or a valley and on the other side it's round and that is something you would specify when you get your kit so that you would get this round rivet it actually goes in uh, oops I'm talking about the cut cut so when you specify what type of a of a kit you would specify or you'd buy the one that has the kind of perpendicular or rectangular rather kind of a rivet and you'd put it in from this side here the round side and we'll show you that in a little while the other type and this is our uh, streak from hell has a uh, a round rivet and so this that's what I would use on this one and this is this end here and you would put it in from this side um, well you get the idea we'll, we'll show you here in a minute how that works but um, you have a round rivet there and a round one here and so you would buy the round rivet kit that's what you'd get well here's our victim uh, the streak from hell and we're going to take a look at the pump lever here in just a minute and um, this is somebody's had these pins up before you can tell here there's a, you can see there's a gouge right here well that that's not mine that somebody's been in there before but basically you just need to get a a roll pin punch and punch these out I leave them in the gun but um, enough so that you can lift the uh, lever out. A couple things to notice. Um, we'll take this apart in a minute and you'll be able to see it, but there's a spring in here, a link spring, and that's what snaps this closed uh, and keeps the, uh, you know, when you get this all in there, that's what keeps it up against the uh, tube so it doesn't slop, uh, slap around and get sloppy on you. So we're going to take a look at that. Um, the Mac 1 kit comes with a uh, rivet here and we'll take a look at that in a minute too and this is a round rivet if you can tell uh, some of them are kind of square or rectangular but this is round on both sides and if you notice there's a big side and a small side so um, to get this all apart and replace the rivet uh, we're going to pound it out from the small side to the big side, of course. And this is, um, it's a consumable item. And the idea is to have the rivet wear rather than the uh, lever or this, uh, this link. And so uh, since it's in the kit, we're going to go ahead and do that and pull it apart and take a look at it. So I'm going to get it set up. Okay, well, there there is a little bit of spring tension on the lever and so what we're going to do is uh, this is an eighth inch piece of stock we're going to put it in just behind the uh, the rivet and make sure that this is yeah that's the right direction and go ahead and take the tension off so that spring is no longer tensioning this lever and now we can go ahead and get it into the uh, press and, and press that uh, rivet out. So that's what we'll set up next. I think you can see this. Um, we have this uh, 
punch here. This is actually a eighth inch uh, end mill that's been busted off, and so I repurposed it here for this as a as a punch here. I've got everything in the arbor press, and I guess how I do it is I'll put some back out here for a second. Um, I'll put some pressure on here to uh, push it out, and then I've got a ball peen hammer that I'll tap on the ram. And you can't see that, but you'll hear it, and that sometimes will uh, uh, make it a little easier to, to get out and a little more controllable. Okay, here we go. Got the uh, everything set up here. There it goes. Okay. There's the old uh, rivet. Came out. Uh, I guess I'm a little bit uh, inclined to baby these things. I know some people just get in there and bang them out, but uh, well, we got the uh, lever out uh, from our streak from hell. We've got the spring, which you know, <laughs> given that everything else on this gun was messed up, the spring is in remarkably good condition. I was kind of surprised at that, as was. The uh, link here, pretty good shape too. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this all back together and, and we'll take a look at that in just a minute. Uh, but before we do that, I wanted to um, show the, uh, the um, uh, bushing that goes in the front and it goes in essentially like that. And we're going to go ahead and put that in. And um, these are from more um, recent guns. They started using these and um, what they do is it provides support. If you look at this, this is just a very thin uh, stamped material here in the front uh, where this goes through and so it's it's kind of weak right there. And what this does is provide support uh, for that. Um, you know, and, and that's a good good idea. You can't use these on really early guns because uh, they don't fit the uh, plug, the front plug. But you can use them on guns uh, from the 1960s and 70s. And like I say, at some point this was added to the um, uh, Sheridans as a stock item. Of course, they cheapened some other parts when they did it, so they had to to beef this up so it wouldn't fall apart. But anyway, we're going to put that in right now. Okay, well this is uh, this is our bushing that we're going to install and essentially all you're going to do, a little awkward for the camera here, but you're just going to put a wide screwdriver in here and separate it just enough to slip that in place. And that's basically all there is to it. Uh, if there's some burrs in there, you may have to take something and uh, you can even take the spring, which is hardened, and run around that and deburr it. If you happen to bend this such that it's uh, deformed, you can always put this in your vise and redo it. But that's all there is to this, this part here. Okay, we're getting ready to put this all back together. The first thing we want to do is put the uh, spring back in, and there's a little cutout here, and this is going to protrude out the bottom of that. So, put that in like so. Get in there. Okay, and then we want to compress this so that we can get this uh, rivet in. Put it into our vise and compress the spring. Ok. 
Okay, good. And then the um, lever goes in next. Let's see, then we have the uh, lever and finally the rivet. Oops, I get that backwards. Yep, this is the big side here. Okay, well in any event, uh, the lever goes in. There we go. And don't forget to put the lever in. I've done that before. Okay. And there we go. Okay. So there's no tension on there right now. We let go of the uh, spring here. And now we've got tension. You can see it snaps back at the end of the all right now we've got to set that rivet in place we've got our rivet ready got the lever in place everything's ready to go small end here on this side and the large end of the rivet on this side what we're going to do is we're going to bucket from the the large side in not rocket science here, we're just going to whack it with the hammer. And we're going to rotate the uh, lever a little bit, make sure it's not hung up anywhere. Whack it some more. Rotate it down to the closed position. It really doesn't take too much for these rivets to set. And I think we're good. What you can do too, if it's sticking up, if it's a little proud, uh, you can take it over and file it just a little bit or uh, you know, buff it up so that it's nice and clean. But that's all there is to it, to, uh, to bucking the rivet there. Yeah, we're into the wood on both sides. So there's the uh, forearm all ready to go back in the gun. So let's put the front part of this tube together. Okay, I think we're ready for the uh, front end here. This is our pump rod. It's not the adjustable kind and I decided not to switch over. Um, and I put a new pump cup in out of the kit so that's all ready to go. We've got the uh, link pin and the two roll pins. And for this particular uh, gun, I thought I'd go ahead and spring for the uh, metal or steel blued uh, front end cap. The old one is probably okay, but uh, you know, we had pin missing out of one and the other one was sticking halfway out. So um, these get uh, degraded pretty quickly when you're putting these pins in and out, so um, I'm going to replace it. And so it's pretty straightforward because um, we're not, we don't have to do the adjustment on the, uh, uh, on the rod. So let's go ahead and, oh and this is the uh, bumper to keep it quiet, we'll put that on last. Let's go ahead and get the uh, this in the tube, put a little bit of sauce on there. Whatever excess you can put down the front of the tube here. And so that goes in. And at this point, we have to get the uh, forearm. Far 
before, didn't I? So basically what we're going to do is we're going to line up that hole there, this one in the back, with this hole here. And then stick a pin in that. And then we're pretty well set on the on the uh, lever part of it. Okay. Push in there. Then we've got our uh, new front end here. One way to put it, I think, like so. Start in the front. And the back set up here. better. Lined up. Well, one thing that's kind of important uh, to do now before we put the valve in is to put the uh, stock lug back in and it's really hard once you've got the gun back together to get this fella in there without tearing it apart as a matter of fact I don't know how you can uh, do that so we're going to go ahead and put that in now and put a 5 8 inch uh, rod in there to kind of. Oops, that's not it. Where'd my 5 8 inch rod go? Here it is. A piece of 5 8 inch rod goes in, and that kind of holds it from falling back. Put the washer on and the stock lug. And just a quick turn, we, we really just want to snug this up. You can break off the tab inside if you're not careful, so no sense overdoing it. Okay, now we're ready to start. Let's get our kit. And the first thing that goes in is the uh, check valve. This goes in with the marked side up. There's usually an X or something on it. So let's go ahead and drop that in. I always find it interesting. You've got a 50-50 chance of getting this in correctly. And it takes more than two tries. Come on now. There it is. Okay. We have a punch. We're going to put that down in there. Make sure it's set in there proper. Oops. Set in there properly. And it is. And we're just going to put the punch in there. And uh, you may not see this, but we're going to give it a good whack with a hammer to set that. Okay, there's that piece. Next comes the uh, sp spring. It goes in there. I don't know why everything wants to go in crooked here. There it goes. 
and then we have the um, the washer goes on top of the spring. Now that takes care of the inlet side of things. We're going to set this aside for just a minute while we work on the uh, the other end. The first thing we're going to do is compress the spring and that'll make it easier to put together. It also means that uh, you might have to cock the gun before you pump it. Otherwise it won't hold air, but we'll do that off camera. Okay, we're ready to go here. We've got the uh, check valve, check valve spring, washer, exhaust valve spring, the exhaust valve uh, here, and uh, the stem. We've got a synthetic seal here. And we've stuck that on with uh, diver's grease. Um, another synthetic seal here again with diver's grease and I switched this over to a Benjamin style nut um, because the one that was in there was pretty well buggered up so I don't think it was much use. So we're gonna, this is actually a Benjamin valve if, not, if I'm not mistaken. It's got two ports to it. So let's see what we can do. Get the uh, tube insert all that stuff in there try and catch the spring you know you're on the spring if you've got spring tension like so I'm going to turn it up and um, show this in another video about how to do this the single port video we're going to go ahead and see if we can't get it to click here there it is and then we can start threading it in one actually went in pretty easily so um, we'll just tighten it up some more we're gonna go put it in the vise tighten it up a little more and see if we can get some air into that guns in the vise tubes in the vise rather we're gonna go ahead and get catch that nut again tighten up the nut just a little more okay we can try pumping it a few times. Well, we definitely have resistance. Just for the heck. Okay, we're going to use this uh, punch, turn it around, see if we can tap that um, exhaust valve and get some sound out of it. Yep. All right, pump it up a few more times. One, two, Three. Some of that. Try tightening the nut up just a little more. I think we're good. All right, here we go. Eight pumps. One. Three from Hell's got eight pumps. Try with the valve. I think we should be okay, just in case. No, we're good. Okay, so we're done, right? No, we're not done. We got a couple more things we got to do. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to pump it up to eight, and then we're going to test it overnight and make sure it holds air. Well, here's the streak from hell. It's holding air. Um, we've pumped it up eight times. I, kinda, I turned the gun around a different orientation here in the vise. And what we'll do is we'll leave it here overnight with the pump arm open about like this. Um, it's got the eight pumps in it. Uh, if we get out here tomorrow and pound on the uh, exhaust valve stem and it's got air in it, then that means we did good. Um, if it doesn't have any air in it, there's two choices. One is it's coming out the exhaust valve here, uh, and the other is that it's coming out the check valve. If it's coming out the check valve, this uh, arm will shift up, and so we just leave it kind of at an angle like that. If it's higher tomorrow morning than it is now, uh, we'll have to go back in and get the check valve, check it out. Okay, well, I came out here uh, after dinner 
and uh, just happened to come out to the shop and I was kind of surprised um, the location of the um, lever here, the forearm, is, is way out here. It seems to me when we left it, it was something around that angle and now it's moved way out here. So what that means is that air is leaking out past the uh, check valve, uh, the intake valve, and it's pushing and if uh, you can't see it, but here's where the hole is in the tube and the pump cup is just on this side of the hole there. So what we've got is a situation where the uh, where the inlet side is not holding air and it's pushing the pump arm up and this is how you test for it. So it's a good thing we tested for it, otherwise we wouldn't know. So what this means is we gotta pull it apart again, take everything out, um, get a new check valve, install that, put everything back and try it again. And I think if it fails a second time, I'm going to chalk it up to the streak from hell here. Um, just not being able to hold air because of something that the uh, a prior owner had done. So that's where we're at with it. Um, this is <laughs> the first time I've run into this. I mean, I've heard of it, but and this is why we do it. We do the test. Uh, well, after the uh, failure um, of the check valve here, I went back in and rebuilt the, uh, the valve system, the compression chamber. Uh, put a new check valve in. It's also the uh, same kind of synthetic uh, valve from Mac One Air Gun Shop that came with the kit. Uh, burned through a couple new seals on the exhaust valve. Uh, I did go in and clean up the, the seat there a little bit and uh, polish it a little more and then put it all back together pumped it up. We've got eight pumps in it right now and left it overnight. And so this time it's holding. So whatever uh, the issue was last time, maybe a little bit of debris somehow uh, got under that uh, check valve or I'm not, I don't know what, what it was, but uh, that's why we test them uh, before they uh, get, uh, get finished is then you know that you've got a problem and you can go back in and and fix it. Um, so this one works as far as the check valve. It didn't push the, the handle back up. It's in the same position as we left it last night when we set it up. So if it has air in the exhaust side or in the compression chamber, we should be able to pop it out of the exhaust valve and that means we're done with all the valving. So let's try that. Yep. Okay, so um, as far as the valve parts of this, we're done. Um, we will test it after we get it all back together and make sure it dumps all the air at eight pumps. That's what we, we're shooting for. Um, and so now it's time to put it back together.